If you want to be really productive on your Mac, you need to pick the right apps. And in today's video, I'm going to reveal five of my favorite apps that make me super productive. So I used to be the sort of person who would switch freely between apps. I'd download the latest thing that comes out. I'd switch platforms. I'd try new things out, try demos. That's fun to a degree, but it's also massively unproductive. You spend more time trying things out than you do actually using them properly. The trick really is just to find four or five apps that are just perfectly suited to what you do, that you enjoy using, that are set up perfectly for your way of working, and more importantly, that help you do your best work. Now, it's taken a while for me to settle on my favorite Mac apps, and I'm gonna do a similar video for my iPad and my iPhone as well. But today, we're gonna to look at five Mac apps that make me super productive. So the first app is something called Ulysses, and this is probably second to Final Cut Pro in terms of the app that I use the most often. I find Ulysses an incredible productivity app because it helps me do one thing consistently very well, and that's writing. Now there are tons of word processor type apps out there. There's Word, there's Scrivener, Bear, there's just no end of them basically. IA, IA Writer, if I can say it correctly, that's another one. There's just loads of them. But I've settled on Ulysses because it just feels right to me. I do it for pretty much any form of writing I do, whether it be blogs, scripting out videos, planning things. It's just a great way to get words down onto a piece of digital paper. And it can be a couple of things. It can be a very simple word processing app, which just strips away all of the complication. It just gives you a blank screen and your words on there, nothing more. But you can also do a lot of organizing in there. You can set up folders and you can very cleverly organize your work so you can find it quickly. It's very good for referencing as well. So if I need to write a blog that needs to reference an old blog that I wrote or just some research notes and stuff like that, it's very easy in Ulysses to have those two pieces, two or three actually pieces of work uh, running by side by side for reference. It's not perfect. There are some problems with syncing with Ulysses. It tends to occasionally lose its iCloud sync. It comes back, but it's just a bit annoying occasionally, but that's quite rare actually. Like I say, maybe far more productive writing wise, I can just get ideas down very quickly. And it's helped me organize my work much better as well. It's also taught me the basics of Markdown. Now Markdown is a form of coding really, developed by a chap called John Gruber, you may know, and, and a couple of other people I think. And it's just a way of writing text that is can, can easily be formatted for, for loads of different platforms. So it gives you standardized ways of marking text as bold, italics, inserting links, all that sort of stuff. And Ulysses by default out of the box is actually a markdown editor. And at first it's a bit jarring, but then you realize it has huge benefits. And if you're someone who does a lot of writing, I think it will have a, a big benefit on your life. The next app I use is something called Spark, which is an email client. And you might be the sort of person who uses Mail, the, you know, the out of the box client for Macs, and that's fine, it, that works pretty well. I found Mail a little bit stagnant when it comes to, to development. They just don't, Apple haven't moved it along enough from my point of view. And I do find the way it organizes conversations and that kind of stuff pretty irritating personally, but I understand why some people like it. For me, email is a really important tool. I use it almost like a to-do list. I have a to-do list, which I'll come on to later, but I, I do treat emails with a lot of respect. I'm not the sort of person who will tell you not to email me. If you email me, I'll get back to you might take me a couple of days to do so, but I need an app that can help me triage and also manage my email and compose my email as simply as possible. And the best tool I've found to do this so far is Spark Email. It's brilliant for a number of reasons. It, one of the first things it does, it syncs brilliantly across all of your devices. And if you get a new Mac or a new phone or a new iPad, etc. All you have to do to get all of your settings carried across is log in with one of your email addresses and it carries literally everything across from all your other email accounts, your signatures, your settings, everything. That is such a massive time save with email. It also has a great smart inbox feature. I know that's not anything new. Every Pretty much every email client does that. I just like the way it groups emails together. I also think it's got the best way of organizing threads in emails, which can get very, very cumbersome and complicated to look at if you've got lots of replies to, to certain emails. For me, it just works. It's a very objective thing, but I do recommend checking out Spark. There's one caveat with Spark at the moment. I hope they get this fixed. If, you, if you're watching this, the team at Riaddle, then please bear this in mind. There is a horrendous memory leak that occasionally and completely randomly surfaces on the Mac. And for example, if you're using an M1 MacBook, you'll find that it will chew up the battery life completely randomly. Not always, just every now and again, you'll look at your battery indicator 
and look at the offending lists of apps that are chewing up your battery and Spark will be in there for no reason at all. So please get that fixed, Riaddle. But apart from that, it's brilliant. Fantastical, I am the sort of person who cannot get through the day without a proper diary because I would just forget everything I'm doing, everything I've promised people. So I've turned to Fantastical for this. And this is quite a simple one, really. Again, the built-in calendar app for our iOS and also Mac OS is pretty good, to be honest. It works, it's a calendar, you can't get too excited about it. But Fantastical has one really cool feature, or two, actually. The first one is this little drop-down box that you get on the Mac, where you can very quickly bring up your calendar and see your, your scheduled tasks, your scheduled meetings, etc. It's just a very convenient way of finding your calendar and also just referencing dates if you need to. The second really cool thing it does is this kind of AI driven input for calendar entries. So if you, for example, are meeting Dave tomorrow at the pub for lunch and you want to be reminded an hour before, you can just type that conversationally, as I have just done, into Fantastical and it will automatically fill in all the little fields for you. It's just such a time saver, it's amazing. It also syncs very well across devices. I think you do really need to pay for the premium version, if I'm honest, to get everything from it, but it's worth it, it's not particularly expensive. It just saves me loads of time with, with calendars. It's got, it does have Apple Watch integration. I don't use the app on the Apple Watch, to be honest, but if that's your thing, you might like that as well. It's just a really good calendar app. Now, to-do list management, if I didn't have a to-do list, this video wouldn't have happened, my business would never work, and I'd be, I don't know where I'd be, to be honest, I've got such a bad memory. So I have to have a good to-do list app running my entire life, really. And the one that I've been using for a long time now is OmniFocus. Now, again, there's loads of to-do list apps out there. For me, OmniFocus just, it just works, really. Now, it's a much bigger app than I give it credit for. I'm using, 10% of its functionality. OmniFocus is what's known as a get things done, GTD platform. It's basically a way of organizing your projects and your tasks, etc., into a way that means you just get everything done in time and you save yourself a lot of time. All the features built into OmniFocus are built around that GTD framework. The thing I love about it is that you can reduce it just down to a really powerful to-do list. And for me, that works. And that's all I use it for. I do categorize to-dos -do -to by projects and things like that and obviously I put in recurring tasks and notes and stuff but yeah I don't go any further than that and for me it works and it's just nice to know actually that it's got that additional functionality if I ever want to really make use of that GTD way of working. My last app is something called Toggle and this is an interesting one. It's a time recording app so it's typically used by people who bill for their time so if you Bill by the hour, Toggle is a way of accurately tracking how much work you're doing for a client. Now I use it like that to a degree occasionally, not, not all the time, but some work I do is, is billable by the hour and that's it's useful for that, obviously. But that isn't really the reason I use Toggle. The main reason I use it is a productivity tool. And that is because I've got into the habit now of tracking everything I do. Literally, this video I'm recording now, I am tracking my time doing this on Toggle. Now, the reason I do that is because it gives me a brilliant indication throughout the day of how busy I've been and how productive I've been. And because with Toggle, I only time proper work. So if it's doing this, or if it's perhaps writing something, or whatever it might be, you know, having a Teams call or something, I'll be running the Toggle timer. So if I reach lunchtime and that Toggle timer says you've done four hours of work, I know that is four hours of solid work. If it says two and a half hours, I know it's not been a particularly productive morning. So for me, it's just this brilliant way of assessing how busy and productive I've been. And also you can then look back and see where you're spending your time. And that's fascinating. You know, you, you, when you think you perhaps you're busy doing something, if you look back at how, many, how often you're doing that one thing on Toggle, you might be surprised actually. You, it may not be as, all encompassing as you think it is and equally you may start to spot tasks where you're spending way way too much time and you can pull back from that so toggle it does take a bit of getting used to in terms of remembering to to record your time but it for me it's it's completely second nature now it's not a big deal at all so i recommend giving it a go so there you go they were my five productivity apps at some stage i will do a bit more a deep dive into other apps i use like final cut pro logic etc i've got lots of ideas for content around that have i missed anything out in terms of productivity apps that you rely on if you, if, if you know if you've got a bunch of apps that are absolutely key to you getting your work done let us know in the comments. It's great to share these, these experiences. Lastly, if you want to get a glimpse behind the scenes at the studio, keep watching for a link to a video I've done where I show you how it's all set up and what I do in here, because 
you might find it interesting. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.